Uh, good afternoon. Um, I think we can get started. Uh, this session, we are going to talk about um, monitoring and uh, diagnosing the uh, performance issues on Cloud Foundry um, framework. Um, because as more and more applications are being uh, deployed, um, so how are we going to monitor? What are the ops um, considerations? And uh, if we have any kind of a performance issue, how are we going to resolve them? Um, so those are the things that we're going to talk about in this session. Um, my name is Surya Dugarala. I am an STSM responsible for the IBM's Watson and Cloud Platform Architecture and Performance Engineering. And with me, Amil um, Arad. Um, he is uh, the Senior Director in RBC Digital Banking Channels. Um, so today's um, session will focus on the Cloud Foundry uh, from a performance engineering point of view from within IBM, what we have identified and what we are doing. And also we will share, um, because there are around 40 production applications uh, that are there in Cloud Foundry with Bluemix on RBC. So what exactly RBC is actually doing for you know, ops and monitoring and uh, so it's going to be a mix of both from the lab as well as from the, um, uh, the customer application point of view. So I'll talk a little bit about uh, the Cloud Foundry uh, monitoring framework, um, what facilities we have in the Cloud Foundry itself and uh, then we will uh, get into the enterprise application monitoring um, like whether it's online banking or commercial banking and you know other applications that RBC is actually um, deploying. Um, what exactly, you know, what um, dashboards that they are developing, what they are using for operations and those things. And then we will take a, a specific use case um, of um, uh, a, a, a typical performance problem that we have encountered in, in, in uh, um, RBC's online banking and um, how we have uh, resolved those things um, using the uh, framework um, that is offered and also the third party tools also we have. So Cloud Foundry monitoring framework, um, as most of you know, uh, the, the framework itself has multiple tools um, that you, know, you have the simple CFCLI, you know, where you can get the basic information like the CPU memory and stuff to a, a logregator firehose, right, you know, where you can um, um, enable it and you have the different nodules that you can actually get the data from individual components. And, uh, you know, though that's another thing that we have available um, for advanced users because you get so much of data, so you have to be uh, um, really familiar with, you know, what to look for because this firehose, once you attach it and then get that, you get a lot of data. And also, uh, another thing that we do in the lab um, is uh, we use Grafana, Graphite, and uh, the InfluxDB, um, and uh, we um, design some dashboards uh, to do a little bit uh, deeper analysis and you know, know each component of Cloud Foundry, um, uh, wh how um, it is performing as you actually run through different applications. And of course, we have uh, the third-party APM tools, um, the New Relic APM or the Health Center for, um, you know, profiling. So those are other tools that, um, you know, you can enhance uh, the ability for you to, um, you know, diagnose any performance issues. So when it comes to the enterprise uh, monitoring, um, you know, framework and what exactly uh, uh, RBC has, um, if you look at um, RBC uses Dynatrace for um, you know application monitoring for like an uh, APM uh, framework, uh, and of course uh, Dynatrace has um, you know some enhanced agents um, because most of the applications are Node and Java, uh, so Dynatrace um, you know we worked with um, Dynatrace to to get the internal agents to um, put those hooks into the runtimes so that you can actually get additional information in the runtimes. So that, that's another thing that they are using. And um, we also have um, RBC's custom um, environment dashboards, uh, mainly for three things. Uh, we have the Cloud Foundry metrics data. Uh, I'm going to show those uh, snapshots. Um, and also the Cloud Foundry application logs, and um, we have the admin console APIs that will enable you to, um, to set some, um, you know, like thresholds and stuff so that uh, operations team can um, 
really get some notifications when a specific um, threshold hits. Um, and also, uh, you know, a few other things that we have um, made some plug points. And of course, we have the operation management dashboards um, through the admin console. We have delivered them. Um, and then another thing is, um, see, the, the, the plug points. Like, you know, we have some plug points where if you want to combine, let's say you have an application. You have an application uh, that uh, not only, um, you know, like going through and running within the Cloud Foundry at runtime, but also it uses the external third-party um, uh, services, maybe data service or cognitive service or IoT. So there are some plug points where you can actually correlate the transaction data as the transaction flows through all these different layers. Um, you know, you may be able to design your own dashboard to get all these data points together um, and then display them on the single unified dashboard. So those are some of the plug points also we have. So when you look at these uh, resource usage, like uh, your application is actually deployed um, in a Diego cell or you know, DEA, um, you can actually see um, the resource usage from a memory uh, CPU or um, you know, network point of view and the storage point of view. Um, it will give you a, a very high level view of um, uh, on an average, right? And you have five D, uh, Diego cells, right? You know, what's the average CPU or memory or storage consumption? Um, of course, you may have uh, in your environment, you may have like CPU overcommit or memory overcommit on all those things. So we can actually um, normalize the data based on your configuration also. Um, if you look at uh, the, C, the, the, the resource usage pattern, like, you know, here you can see that 77% CPU uh, is being used. So these are uh, a high level um, indication that, okay, now you may have to enhance and get another Diego cell or, you know, this is a very coarse level um, dashboard uh, that, you know, at a very high level operations team will be looking at. If you drill down further, because um, you know, if you want to go a little bit deep into the internal components, uh, this, is a, this is from the Cloud Foundry. If you look at Diego architecture here, Cloud Foundry, you can see all the different internal components, right? And you have the uh, BBS or BBS database. Uh, you have the Diego cell, garden containers, brain, and you know, all these internal components. If you want to really understand when you are scaling to like maybe 30 million, um, you know, uh, transactions per day or at a very high volume, how each of these components are actually uh, um, performing, which one is going to be the bottleneck. So which pipe has to be, uh, you know, you have to broaden that and make it bigger so that that one single bottleneck is not going to take the whole transaction uh, system for ransom, right? So we can do that. Um, what we did uh, for this is um, uh, we have taken uh, the open source metrics um, you know, tool and uh, we took those agents and then put them in each of these components that I mentioned here, like whether it is brain or whether it is go router. Um, so you can actually put those agents in there and then you can collect the data and then push that into an influx DB uh, that we have, um, you know, created for storing this data, and then that can be fed um, to the graphite server that we have running in our Bluemix environment, uh, Cloud Foundry environment, and then from that server, actually, it serves the the Grafana dashboard. So this this whole um, infrastructure that you can actually set it up which will give you uh, very fine-grained information about, okay, when you have um, uh, 10 instances running on a specific Diego cell, and uh, all those 10 in the 10 uh, garden containers within the cell, and how many, how many processes that, uh, you know, those, um, uh, each garden container, um, you know, cell, uh, each garden container instance, um, I know, how many garden container instances in a cell, right? All that low-level information, um, you, can, you can actually get that. So here you can see this, uh, this is showing the CPU, memory, and the network and disk usage from a, a specific Diego cell. We have, uh, in our Bluemix local environment, there are four Diego cells. You can see those four Diego cells, each one, how much CPU, memory. So it's, it's much um, easier for you to understand 
how your applications are actually being deployed across different cells, and uh, whether your application, maybe it may be a Node application, Java application, how the, the, the memory and uh, you know, CPU usage patterns, how much the, the storage is being used, whether you have any kind of a disk bottleneck that you have. So all of those things um, can be easily, you know, um, proactively you can understand. Um, and this is the another view of this garden um, uh, container count. Like you know, you can see how many garden containers you have. This is very important for um, you know, like we had an issue where the 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 virtualization that we have used for our VMs, like you know, for uh, generating all these different components, the VM uh, was using um, uh, the para virtualized PV. And uh, we could not push more than 30 containers, garden containers in a cell. Once you reach 30 containers, then your VM is like can, kind of completely saturated. So we could clearly see that um, at uh, 30 number, a number of garden containers in the cell, um, our CPU is like kind of completely 100%. Uh, so that gave us the insight that then we changed that para virtualized to HVM like a hardware assisted, uh, and then all of a sudden, without any just one hardware change, um, the virtualization change, uh, we could contain um, from 30 to 200. So the density of containers in a Diego cell has gone up by six times, more than six times. So those are the engineering decisions and uh, the design bottlenecks that you may have, um, either in your own um, Cloud Foundry installations, um, or you know the one that's being managed by somebody else. So those are the the very advanced insights you can actually get from here. Another important part is the router, right? Because um, uh, Go router is everything will be channeled through Go router. So the Go router, um, some of you may be familiar. Um, the Go router in Cloud Foundry right now doesn't support Keep Alive's. So if you don't have keep alives, then what will happen is each time a transaction flows, flows through that, um, it will be, uh, you, you have a connection opened, and then once that is done, that, that connection will be closed. So you may be familiar with our um, HTTP keep alives, where you know, in a typical um, app server, um, you, you, once you have the persistent channel, you will send hundreds of requests on top of that. So that's how you get the performance, especially if you're using SSL, and um, you know that's where you can clearly see the performance thing there. So here, go router, unfortunately, you don't have the keep alive support. So you will have additional overhead when you're going through that. So how do you circumvent that? So you can actually see this from here. You know how far the go router is actually um, you know taking, uh, whether it is a CPU or network. And then you can actually increase the concurrency. Like you can add a few more go routers instances to increase the concurrency to reduce that, um, to, to offset the latency impact that you have. So those are the advanced uh, monitoring tools and techniques that you can use um, to, um, you know, to, to make sure that your applications deployed in Cloud Foundry are performing and scaling well. Another thing that um, RBC has actually gone one step further in their um, um, monitoring, um, uh, they are using Google Analytics and stuff. I would like to have uh, Millerad talk a little bit about uh, you know, how they're doing the data analytics and client insights. Thanks, Surya. Let's see if this is on. Thank you, Thank you Surya. So I'm, I'm going to keep my, uh, my part really short. Uh, we have a nice uh, dark room here. So, um, very quickly, uh, in addition to everything that Surya has said, of course we are interested in making sure that we have close monitoring of the application in production. In addition to that, we also are very much interested in terms of uh, designing the applications in the best possible way to maximize the experience for our clients. Uh, and also being able to uh, help our back office processes, which still in some cases, with RBC being a major bank, are still manual. We want to make sure that we drive the efficiency of those processes as much as possible. So what we are doing uh, uh, with our group, with uh, digital business banking, is we are combining the data points that we have from tools like Google Analytics, uh, Dynatrace, consolidating that into, into a view that gives us a holistic uh, perspective on the interaction that we have with our clients, which also gives us a, a holistic view of the applications in production and helps us 
focus effort in the in a specific uh, set of areas where we can make a difference for our clients and we can, where we can save uh, money, frankly speaking, from the operational perspective to RBC. We also want to make sure that we are the first ones to know about any potential uh, situations or issues that we have in production before we start getting those, those client calls. Why is this important? Uh, business banking, uh, one of the key characteristics of business banking is that we process big, large transactions and large volumes of those transactions as well for small businesses, but also for large, uh, large corporate clients. And we want to make sure that those, uh, those transactions are flowing as, uh, as smoothly as possible and that we are very fast in terms of responding to any potential issues. Uh, so that, this is what, uh, what really makes a difference for us. Thank you, Milrand. Um, so we saw different ways of um, you know, monitoring what tools that we have, uh, what custom tools that we can actually build you know, from the Grafana, Graphite, and the InfluxDB, and you know, other um, techniques. So that's all about uh, monitoring. Right? And you want to make sure that your applications are actually uh, you know, performing and scaling without any bottlenecks. If you have any bottlenecks, we will know. So, um, but if you want to diagnose a performance problem already you have in the infrastructure or your application, so how do you go about it? Uh, you know, what tools do we have? Um, I'm going to go over um, a specific uh, you know, incidents that occurred um, while we are looking at the um, online banking application uh, deployed on Bluemix Cloud Foundry and RBC, um, we saw that um, the performance was, uh, you know, our expectation was 400 to 500 uh, transactions per second with sub-second response time. Uh, that was what is expected. Uh, and what we saw was um, we could not go past 12 transactions per second um, with uh, 90 seconds, not sub-second. It is 90 seconds response time. And uh, we tried to increase the number of instances and, uh, you know, all that. So there we, we were, like, out of options of what exactly is happening because there are a lot of moving parts, right? We have the fabric, you have the firewall, you have the front door, you have the back-end mainframe system, and, uh, you know, you have these application um, itself that is actually moved from on-premise to, um, uh, to, to cloud, right? So we don't know where to look for, right? You know, those are um, the tough problems, and one of the things that we have used, uh, of course, multiple uh, tools we have uh, used, but um, just to give you more um, context here, you can see this is RBC's uh, online banking topology that you can see. So when a transaction comes in, right, so it's actually going through the F5 um, you know, firewall and then it's going into the, um, the security layer uh, where the data power and then the TAI, the Trust Association Interceptor, and then it'll take the LTPA token um, and then it will get into Bluemix Cloud Foundry, the orchestration application, right? From there, um, it has to go to the backend mainframe. That's where it, uh, we have the data. And then it'll get the uh, result set back. And then it'll go to uh, the stub and uh, it will review the result set and then um, you know, get the thing back into the uh, front, um, like AngularJS uh, front end. Right? So as you can see, multiple layers here. Um, so what we did um, is we have used four different tools um, and uh, manually correlated all of those uh, to come up with you know, where the problem was. Uh, one of the tools that we have used is New Relic uh, for um, uh, path length analysis. We did uh, a profile uh, using the New Relic. So what we found um, with New Relic was um, in, the, in the path length, we saw a lot of um, you know, threads that are waiting there. So that gave us some hint that there is something wrong within the, uh, uh, within the runtime itself. Right, which is Java in this case, and we are running in Liberty Build Pack. Um, so we focused, because we have other things, but we focused now on only that area. Um, and then what we came to know about, um, then we have used another tool um, like the APM, like monitoring analytics tool, um, that, is the, that will give us the internal details about uh, the thread pools, um, how they're being used, what is the utilization there. Um, so you can clearly see that. Um, the, this is a snapshot of the monitoring analytics tool. So 
what it is giving, you can see that um, on your um, uh, left hand side, um, you have uh, a service latency, the back end service latency of 10 milliseconds. And you can see on your um, right hand side, uh, a service latency of um, 100 milliseconds. Um, in this case, around 1,000 milliseconds or so, 1,000 milliseconds. So you, you have increased the latency in the back end. So what happened was you can see the, the free pool and the idle threads and the used threads. You can see that uh, on your left hand side, the blue bar is actually about um, you know, idle threads. How many threads within that um, app server that are free and ready to take the work? You have sufficient um, um, you know, a number of threads there. So you, when you increase the workload, you have enough threads to take care of that workload so you can actually scale. Whereas on your right hand side, um, you can clearly see that, um, that the yellow uh, one is the, the threads that are used already, used up. So you don't have any thread left. So if you want to increase your workload from uh, 10 users to 100 users to 1,000 users, you don't have anything there. So the traffic was basically um, uh, getting accumulated and just, just blocked at the go router level. It's because you don't have uh, the capacity to handle on the runtime, so you to just so what is happening was as you increase the workload, there is more backup happening at the go router, so you are increasing the latency. Your response time is actually going up, even though you have uh, your runtime is showing your Diego cells are only barely used, like five percent, ten percent, but you know you don't have um, uh, a way to scale. So you have to correlate the, the go router data with the dashboard that I have used, uh, I have shown before, and use New Relic to identify that it is the runtime that is the culprit here. So you have to correlate those two things and then um, say that, okay, this is the backend service latency that is impacting. So um, this is a, a very um, good um, way to correlate these things, but of course it's laborious because uh, you should understand all these pieces together. So it will be nice to have an autocorrelation of all these things together and uh, come up with a unified console. So that way a less skilled um, you know, operator can um, easily identify where the bottleneck is. So that's why it's very important for us to use these tools and correlate them and then make a unified dashboard so that any, these, any kind of problems like this um, can be solved um, you know, easily. Because it took some time, and of course, you should know um, the runtime, you should know the, the Cloud Foundry fabric, and all, all those things. Um, again, uh, this is the same thing, but you know, with uh, 10 milliseconds and 100 milliseconds, uh, this is an in between case. Uh, the, the previous one was extreme, they have gone 10 times. Now, if you go from 10 to 100, you can see on your right hand side um, the, uh, the number of um, you know, used threads. Uh, threads that are in use, executor threads, that has gone up, uh, but still you have um, some idle threads. So you are still, the system is able to take the load, uh, but once you increase that backend service latency, you know, that, that uh, uh, the, the LO um, bar will go up. Right? So in summary, um, there are certain tools that are built in in the Cloud Foundry itself that uh, like CFCLI or Logregator, or, you know, those things you should use as a, as a basic um, monitoring tool set. And I recommend uh, using uh, tools like open source tools like metrics um, and put those agents, um, you know, if you can uh, and get some data. If you're an advanced user, you can actually create your own Grafana dashboards and actually get the data uh, and put it in InfluxDB and then use the Graphite server. And third party tools like APM, uh, like New Relic or M&A and you know, those, those tools also um, will give you a transaction tracking from end to end perspective. Um, and of course the operational dashboards um, is another way as uh, Melarod mentioned, you, know, some, you can use the Google Analytics and others uh, to understand your end customer usage patterns also. Uh, that will enable uh, the operations team as well as the cloud, uh, uh, cloud administrators um, to proactively take some actions. Um, so those are uh, some of the tools uh, you know, from a Cloud Foundry uh, perspective. 
So that will conclude my session. I'll, I can take some questions. Sure. What is your experience with the max size of connection setting in the go router? Uh, experience with the max uh, connections? With the go router now to support other connections, it just can limit how many of them there are. Yes, uh, the keep alive, so you're talking about, right? The, the go router has that, because as I said, it doesn't support keep alive. So um, at one point, you can clearly see um, how it is impacting the connection and disconnect um, of those connections. Um, you can see the kernel CPU go up because these operating uh, system uh, operations, they will use, they'll chew up uh, the kernel CPU. The user CPU is, uh, is okay, but the kernel CPU will slowly uh, go up. So at one point, um, you will just increase the latency. The max number of uh, uh, clients um, that it, it will, each core router instance can support. Um, I think for a network intensive application, what we saw was maximum um, you know, 800 to 900 um, connections uh, per instance that we could uh, uh, support, but beyond that, um, you know, it will just block. So you have to bring in the second instance. Any more questions? Okay, right, thank you.